Alright, for those of you that missed it, the Skulls for the Skull Throne tournament went off just last weekend. Turn and I were co-hosting, and it was a really fun event, but unfortunately, we weren't able to save the VOD. So, I have got uh, the replay for the finals, and we're going to go through those together as a team. Um, right now, we have Flying Taco is playing Norska versus Hadris. It was a best of seven finals that was a real nail biter so i don't want to ruin it for you guys if you haven't seen it so i'm not going to divulge who won the tournament but we're going to go through each and every one of these i will number them which game they are in the series and you can go through the series as you fit but we're going to go through these armies quite quick a lot faster than a normal master cast because again this has already kind of been on the channel and i want to just jump right into it pretty quickly so across the front line we're going to be seeing um, a lot of Marauder Champions intermixed with Marauder Berserkers. So two units of, uh, oh, just one unit of Marauder Champions, two units of Marauder Berserkers, and then Marauders on the on the outside flank, Marauders on the uh, inside flank, and then two units of Marauder Hunters with Javelins. Now, typically, you take Marauder Hunters with Javelins over the throwing axes here. They do have a slight increase, or I'm sorry, quite a substantial increase of the range, 90 versus the 70 of a throwing axe, with a nice anti-large bonus in indeed. Now, in addition to that, you're going to see a nice backline of Spearmen, which are going to go great against the Lizardmen army, and some Skin Wolves. These guys are going to be really good here. A nice little quick little treat here, too. We also have a Frostworm, which does have its Frostbite ability. Uh, for those of you guys who are brand new to the game, which I don't think is many of you, if you're watching this level of cast, um, this is, reduces the speed of anything that it hits by 36%, which is quite nice of an ability as well. Um, it has this Frost Breath, and as well, the Chilling Aura, which reduces the speed of everything in a 40-meter radius around it. Lastly, for the uh, leadership of our Norskin uh, army here, we have Wolfric the Wanderer, the great challenger of every single uh, thing known to man. <laughs> and he has his abilities, of course, the Hunter of Champions reduces speed, armor, and melee defense, as well as fight or die. And of course, he also has his rage ability in built into him as he is a Norskin. Um, he is on his lovely little war mammoth here, so that's going to be pretty awesome. And oh, uh, lastly, lastly, uh, we have a uh, Shaman Sorcerer Metal. Uh, the Scroll of Shielding is very popular for any of the competitive picks because you do get a nice bonus of 22% damage resistance so that you can negate any of the heavier alpha strikes that you would typically see against a Shaman or a Caster for that matter. Also a Scroll of Power. Glittering Robe is one of the abilities. Gives a nice armor buff. A Plague of Rust, a, an armor debuff. And then lastly, Searing Doom. I'm actually going to go ahead and... Zoom on over to our Lizardmen army. Now, this is a nice, good, long front line here. We've got Skin Cohort, then two SARS here with shields, and another unit of Skin Cohorts. In the very back, we're going to see two more units of Skin Cohorts. Then we can see the Umbral Tide, which is the Regiment Renowned version of... Oops, that's <laughs> Wolfric the Wanderer, of the Salamander Hunting Pack. Now, these guys here, um, they are a little bit different than your normal Salamander Hunting Pack. They do have perfect vigor as well as um, stock. So you won't see them until they're upon you, and then they're going to be unleashing uh, payloads of damage. Their missile damage is a little bit faster because it's a slight increase in the reload time, 8.4 versus the 11 that it's standard is. Uh, Skink Priests of Beasts. So we're going to get we're going to access to um, Transformation of Cadon as well as Flock of Doom. And lastly, on both flanks, we're going to see a unit of Feral Cold Ones and a unit of Feral Horned Ones. I'm sorry, uh, Horned Ones over there. And then over here, we're going to see t -Pox Raiders. There we are. This is the new Regiment Renown version of the Cold One Spear Riders. They have Immune Psychology as well as Vanguard Deployment. And then lastly, the Red Crested Skink Chief is the chief for this army. Um, of course, the, the best thing about the Red Crested Skink is that badass Warrior's Crest. 44 melee attack, 27 melee defense. Really makes for a lord that can contend with a lot of the heavier hitting... Um, heavier hitting assassin type lords out there like Colek, Sun Eater, and the such. This fight is underway. We're going to see some some fun action here. Remember, this is game one of the Skulls for Skull Throne tournament. This is the very fine. This is the finals, the best of seven against Flying Taco here on the left Boop. versus Hadri's here on the right. And we can see here some quick play that uh, Hadri's is pulling. He's doing some some flanking action with this coming around to this side. Uh, we also see some more flanking action with this Feral Cold One and these Horned Ones. Horned Ones did get a slight increase in the last patch here, though. I think about 300, 400 points. Um, they were able to be fielded in quite a large quantity, and I think that Creative Assembly was trying to curb that. But unfortunately, that skin crease is in the Hurt Locker here. You have that Frostworm diving headlong into that bad boy. He's just knocking that terror down around, telling him, I hate pigeons, get the hell out of here. Paradon's going to, uh, I'm sorry, the... Um, Transformation of Cadon is dropping down, getting a Mana Core onto the field as fast as possible. This is a good play that, that uh, Mana Core is going to help try and tie up that Frostworm as much as possible. A good rear charge here in with the uh, the flank of the Feral Cold Ones and the Horned Ones. We're going we're gonna to see those Skin Wolves coming in here to try and relieve their bros. And we're going to see that same action. Oops! 
jumping <laughs> jumping all the way over here mirrored on that other end but that mana core is really doing some serious damage you can see the umbral tide is chunking health away from that frost worm and we're only a minute and a half into this engagement here guys you can really see that umbral tide doing a ton of damage got a good charge in from both the barrel cold ones and the teapot raiders jumping all the way in we got plenty of raptors jumping all over the place chris pratt can't do shit against this many raptors and that frost worm has been shut down early in the game great initial play here by hadries then using that mana core suiciding it into these marauders hoping to get a little bit of a fear route not the case here now marauder berserkers perform very well against saurus warriors honestly though the big big thing for uh, a norskin army is using uh, marauder chieftains marauder chieftains are a real great way to kind of hold the line and uh, allow the rest of your forces to kind of um, pivot and attack the harder hitting scarier units of the lizardman army Got a Searing Doom dropping right onto these Saurus Warriors from that Shaman Caster as well. The Marauder Champion taking a big charge in from the Thunderous One. Unfortunately, I did not focus on the Thunderous One. The uh, Thunderous One is, of course, the Regiment Renowned Ancient Stegadon of the Lizardmen. Uh, this, of course, got a little buff here. The Judgment of Uxmach got a five-second increase on its recycle, so it's not going to be going off as often as it was before. Let's take a look over here at the battlefield, kind of survey what's been done here. So... This big left engagement, left field engagement, got shut down very hard. Between the hunters, between the spearmen, between the skin wolves, and the other marauders back here, they were able to push off these feral cold ones and this unit of Paco Pax cohort. That is a very, very, very good trade here because I think that um, Hadrius was really relying on kind of breaking through heavy with that. You got the skin wolves coming in here to do some more damage with the red crested skink, but Flying Taco does have this whole right flank, or I guess this is the left flank, depending on how you're looking at it. Um, still intact here, and he can use this to do quite a lot of better, quite a lot of damage. But he does have Wolfric large and in charge, taking some shots across the bow here, right into the uh, that's the left side, so that would be the stern. Or <laughs> that's not it either. That's the port is your left side. Um, from the umbral tide here, Skinks jumping in here to help out with the thunderous one, but just getting mowed over by Wolfric. Wolfric is uh, bringing down plenty of pain here. But you've got another summon of a Manticore, Transformation of Cadon kicking off, a Searing Doom dropping onto these Marauders, or I'm sorry, onto these Skin Cohorts and Saurus over there. The right flank of Flying Taco's uh, army has been buckled, or at least hit in, by uh, Hadri's over here with both the units, the Feral Cold Ones and the Horned Ones. And you can see that this caster, which was in a bad situation at the very beginning of the game, is in a much more opportunistic one now. Skin Wolves. Changing positions, moving on to the Thunderous One. You can really see here how these hunters with javelins have been just chucking spears all day long. It is a tribal warfare out there, and they have been chunking down the health of the Thunderous One. And it has been working to, to great avail, quite honestly. Uh, like I said, those, those uh, javelins do very, very well, even though they're not AP, against a lot of the scary dinosaurs that you can get fielded um, by a uh, Lizardman army. Got a bit of a melee in here. You've got the uh, mana core jumping on a really good target in the sh the shaman sorcerer of metal. Um, that is typically how think people would use transformation of cat on. They'd use that mana core to focus down and blitz down any kind of caster when there is uh, these kind of open pockets like this. Uh, but you can see here, uh, the feral cold ones are coming back into the fray into some marauder spearmen. The marauder hunters with javelin are getting hit by the umbral tide in the left field here, as you can see, just kind of popping in. Faster boom, and uh, you can also see that this left flank is struggling a little bit. Um, they're being shored up by the red crested skink, and you can see that these this skink cohort has filled has finished off this unit of marauders. But this unit of berserkers is going toe to toe with things and looking to chop up some stuff and finish off these saurus as the red crested skink comes in to help out. <clears throat> Thunderous one getting more and more damage, getting poured into it by those hunters. You can see the horn ones and the feral cold ones. Are for the most part getting pretty much locked down here the horn ones really kind of is trying to stay with the the uh thunderous one as much as possible and the feral cold ones are starting to route off unfortunately balance of power though is still at 50 50. um flying taco has got a really strong command of this game though i'd say uh he's been able to really deal with a lot of the big threats that hadges has thrown his way including both of those backline charges he fended off one of them very well and the other one he completely neutralized so good on him the Red Crested Skink, though, charging in on Wolfric. He has popped Warrior's Crest, but he has also, in return, getting hit with a Hunter's Champion, reducing his armor and melee defense quite drastically. You can... Ooh, I think it was 
we did see a, a spellcaster. I did not quite see which one it was. Uh, Fight or Die has been triggered on Wolfric as well as he just gets hit with the Umbral Tide. It's not looking like it's going to be doing enough damage, though. It's not just chunking it down as fast as he is doing the Red Crested Skank. Like, look at that, man. It's getting put in a dumpster. He's popped the Opal Amulet to try and get some damage resistance. And Hadrius is pushing everything he can into Wolfric. I mean, this is a lot of points. If we, if we take a look at this for just a quick second... Oh, there we go. Um... How, or, uh, Flying Taco lost his Frostworm in the very beginning of the game. That's like, what, 1,800, 2,200 points? And really, from that initial engagement, it looked like things were going to go very well for Hadri's. But now, another big high-value, high-point thing is on the battlefield and is doing quite a bit of damage to the remainder of Hadri's forces. So he has to try and find a way to neutralize it, while at the same time, neutralizing the leadership of the Norskins. Getting charged in here, though, by some spearmen and the rest of these uh, marauders, as, as well as the shaman sorcerer. The normal tides looking to just kind of uh, boot, 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 scoot, and boogie, getting out of that fight with a nice 70 speed. They're pretty quick on the on the run there. The nurse one though, getting just completely felled now by the hunters. Uh, you've got some uh, flock of doom that has tripped out onto uh, Hadri's lizardmen. And it looks like Flying Taco is going to be pushing into the lead on this one. The balance power is shifting pretty wildly. He's out of big, scary things on the battlefield. For the most part, there's not many things that can actually threaten uh, El for the rest. I'm sorry, Flying Taco's in the lead. Audrey's is cannot threaten Flying Taco's army. I think I got that confused there for a second. And it looks like the rest of the army is starting to get put, put to rout. He still does have his caster, but that's not going to be able to do much for him. So, again, I think the big things here were... There were two really big opportunistic moments in this, and I've been saying opportunistic way too much lately. But first, Flying Taco got his Frostworm shut down quick, hard, and fast. Hadri's got a really good Manticore summon out and really put in a, a good amount of hurt on him. And again, that's a huge amount of points done for. If you look at this army, it's not even an elite, strong, durable army. I mean, this is mainly Marauders. He's relying on stuff like Wolfric and the Frostworm to do a lot of the heavy lifting, as well as the, the Hunters with Javelins, Skin Wolves, and Spearmen do a lot of the counter charges on the bigger creatures. So I think that um, Hadri's shutting down the Frostworm was a major force multiplier for him. But then at the same time, Flying Taco shutting down two units, the Pak Ho Pox cohort, as well as one unit of Feral Cold Ones, and then really kind of putting the Red Crested Skink to flight, really, I think, helped keep the momentum in the favor of Flying Taco, because then the other flank, which was the, again, the other Horned One, where are you? Right there, Horned Ones and uh, Feral Cold Ones weren't able to really kind of meet up with their, their flanking brothers to push the advantage. And I think that's what really pushed it in the long run for Flying Taco. I think they both had really strong armies here. And they both had answers for one another's deployment. I just think that uh, Hadri's got a lot of really good engagements. Or I'm sorry, Flying Taco got a lot of really good counter engagements to Hadri's charges in the back line. That really ultimately won it for him. That, and he got he did a really good job of protect, protecting his Marauder hunters. He kept them staggered, allowed them to uh, overlapping fire onto one another. So when that back line was breached, he had the other two Fire into the uh, the horn ones, into the Paco Pox, into the Feral Cold ones, ultimately keeping his backline a lot more secure. But we got a lot more games here to cover for the finals of the Skulls for Skulls Throne tournament, guys. So stay tuned. We'll see in those. Uh, we're going to see those drop on the channel uh, gradually throughout the rest of the week. But as always, have a good one and take care.